Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thanks so much for being here today. I have my top 25 best Christmas DIYs from 2022 to try in 2023. And I'm super excited to revisit these DIYs that I love so much and bring them to you today. DIY number one is this picture frame Mary sign. We're gonna use five of these metal picture frames from Dollar Tree, some telling tower blocks, and these tall wood letters from Hobby Lobby. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna remove the stand and the backing from all of these five frames. We're just going to get the frame by itself so that we can paint those. Set aside your metal and your backing. I'm using Waverly's chalk paint in the color crimson, and for now, I'm just going to paint the fronts of each of my five frames. We're gonna be gluing these. Actually, I am going to paint the sides as well. Then taking a mini screwdriver, I'm going to remove the screw that's holding the little metal clip to each of my frames. I love these tall skinny wood letters from Hobby Lobby. They come two in a pack. So I'm going to spell out the word Mary and I'm going to give these each a coat of Waverly Chuck paint in the black color called ink. So just one coat for each of those and set those aside to dry. Now that our frames are painted, we're gonna return the uh, metal to the back as well as the backing and put those little metal clips back down. We're gonna do this for all five of our picture frames. Next, we're going to use some either Jenga blocks or tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree and some wood glue. We're gonna glue and put together a stand for our sign. So you can see I'm just laying out my blocks here to see how long or how wide of my stand I'm going to need. Then once I have those counted out, I'm gonna use my wood glue using this ruler here to make sure they are straight. We're gonna glue those all together. I'm actually gonna do three rows and then you can see I'm making really long lines here because my sign is five of these frames wide. So again, whichever blocks you're using, you'll lay them out and then glue them all together in sections and then glue your entire platform together for your sign. I'm also going to take two pairs of blocks and glue those together. You'll see what we'll use these for in just a little bit. Now while our wood glue is drying, we're gonna take some hot glue and we're gonna glue those letters to the front of our metal frames. You can see I'm lining it up all the way down at the bottom. You will see that you can see the hole from where we removed the screw, but we will be covering that up very shortly. Coming back to our platform or our stand, I am going to paint this with that black chalk paint as well as these two pairs that we glued together. This is the best way to cover up the word Jenga if you're using actual Jenga blocks. If you're using tumbling tower blocks, paint them whatever color you want. Once my black was dry, I'm taking a chippy brush and my white chalk paint, and I'm just dry brushing white over this just so it's not the solid black. Now to cover up those screw holes, I'm gonna take this red and black gingham ribbon from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to make five small, simple bows here, just getting them even and then trimming the tails, trying to make five that are all pretty close to the same, and we'll glue those right over those screw holes at the top of each letter. Next, I'm gonna take the two pairs of blocks and I'm gluing them to the bottom of my second frame and my fourth frame. 
we're going to elevate our second and fourth letters. And now taking a combination of wood glue and hot glue, I'm going to glue my five frames to the base. I know exactly where the middle is because I can see how wide my stand is so that M is all the way to the left. My first R here is gonna be right in the middle of my stand of tumbling tower blocks and my Y will be all the way at the end and then our two elevated letters will be between the frames that are already glued down. Now to decorate the front of my stand, I'm gonna make a bow where I just keep looping the ribbon back and forth and holding it in the center. I'm gonna do three loops on each side and they're gradually going to get smaller as we come up to the top. You can see I'm just going back and forth with my ribbon. I believe this was from Dollar General or Hobby Lobby. And then I'm just going to tie it in the center with a piece of jute twine. And we're gonna glue this right to the middle of the front of our sign and then tuck in some pieces of lamb's ear greenery to finish off the project. For DIY number two, we're also going to use picture frames, a different kind from Dollar Tree, and we're going to make a Christmas window using some ribbon, some of these greenery wreaths, and four of these wood frames that have a little bracket on the front. Now, before I paint the frames, I'm going to remove the two screws and bracket from each frame, and then also remove the backing and the glass from the frames so we can paint them. And I love Crimson Red by Waverly for Christmas. So we're going to paint just the fronts of our frames right now and the insides a little bit. I'm going to use my little sander and just distress the paint job a little bit, giving us a little bit more of a farmhouse distressed look. And then we're going to glue our frames together in two pairs like this going tall ways we're just going to put a little wood glue on the short side and glue those together these frames even though the front looks like wood they're actually like that pressed mdf cardboard type of thing once our two pairs are dry we will run some wood glue along the long edge and glue the four together like this to look like a four paned window then i am going to run a bead of hot glue along the back in those um, spaces where the frames are glued together just to give a little bit more stability. Now that our window is glued together, we can go around the outside and paint that red as well. Once that is fully dry, I'm going to return the little brackets to the windows. I thought these added a fun little touch and the holes were already there. So just return those brackets to our frames. Next, I'm going to put the glass back in to each of the four sections, and then I'm going to hot glue that in. I just don't want the glass rattling around. Now you could stop with just the, 
red frames and the glass and then make it actually like a window. That is definitely an option. You're gonna see I am going to add some black and white scrapbook paper to the frame backings and add them back in. You definitely could do either way. Before I do that though, I'm gonna take these three hanging wreaths from Target. I'm gonna put them all together. And instead of using the jute twine, I'm going to use a piece of that red and black gingham ribbon to hang these down the center of our window. DIY number three is gonna be a simple neutral book stack using three paperback books from Dollar Tree, some of this craft paper roll, and some sticker letters in jute twine. Now I'm taking a piece of the craft paper, it's basically like what a grocery bag is made out of, and I'm going to cut it the height of our paper bag, or paperback books, that's a lot of peas. Uh, and so it measures about six and three quarter inches. You'll see me hold the book up there. And I just made it easy and got three books that were the exact same. And then what you're gonna do is kind of like when you were in school maybe, is wrap your books with the craft paper. So you can see I'm creasing it. And I'm not going to Mod Podge the paper to the book. I am going to just tape it gently on the inside of the front and back covers just so that the paper doesn't come loose. You can see a couple pieces there on the back and a couple pieces on the front. We'll do this to all three of our books. Then we're gonna stack them up, and I'm gonna use some sticker letters in my stash. You can put whatever words you want. I decided to go with Peace on Earth, so I'm starting with my words on the right-hand side and then moving left towards the first letter of the word. So Peace on Earth. Then I'm gonna take some jute twine, and I'm going to tie and wrap my books together. Even though I had them tied both ways, they were slipping around a little bit, so I did decide to put just a little tiny bit of hot glue between each of the two books. And then you can see I just added a little bit of greenery and berries to the top. DIY number four is this Joy Ornaments wall hanging. I'm using some wood circles from Walmart, a frame from inside a wrapped canvas, some scrapbook paper, and here I am taking some black Waverly chalk paint. I am watering it down. I wanna make it just more like a black wash. So I'm going over it and then we're gonna come back and wipe away the excess. It's gonna give kind of a really cool uh, black wash look. Now I'm using some chipboard because my frame did not have a backing. I'm cutting it to size and then I'm going to wrap it with two lengths of this burlap ribbon.
Then I cut another piece of chipboard to cover where I have the ends of the burlap ribbon here just to give it a cleaner look on the very back of the project. Then my next step was to glue this to the back of my frame to complete the burlap look on the back side of our sign. Next, I'm going to take three of these wood circles from Walmart and I'm going to apply Mod Podge to them. And we're going to let that dry completely. Then I'm going to iron on some different patterned Christmas scrapbook papers to the front of our circles. Then using our little Fiskars fingertip knife and a cutting mat, we'll just go around and cut off the excess paper to get our three Christmas ornaments for our sign. I will also use my little sander to get those edges nice and clean. Now you can see I'm laying out my three circles to look like ornaments. I'm cutting some thin pieces of ribbon to make them look like they're hanging from the top of the frame. So just putting a tiny little dot of hot glue on the top of the piece of ribbon. We're gonna secure that down to the burlap background and then have it hang straight and cover the other end with our ornament. Once those are glued down, I'm also gonna tie three simple bows using that same thin ribbon to glue to the top of each ornament where the string is connected. The last thing we'll add to this project is this wood word sticker from Hobby Lobby, the word joy, and I'm gonna just color it black with a Sharpie marker. And then we're going to get everything glued down on our project and we'll add the word joy on the bottom at the very end. DIY number five is going to be a nativity sign made out of some paint sticks, some giant craft sticks, and some felt and a little wood plug. So I'm gonna take, I believe it's four, no, six paint sticks. I'm cutting them all to the same length, which I believe was about six inches. And then I'm going to paint them all with our antique wax. You can either use the baby wipe method or brush on the wax and then wipe off the excess with a paper towel. We don't need to do the backs. We're just going to do the front sides of all six of these pieces. Next, I'm cutting about a three inch piece of one of these rectangular wood slats from Dollar Tree and I'm painting that white. Then once our paint stick pieces are dry, you can see I'm gonna take four of them and I'm gonna glue the top and bottoms on top of the two side pieces to make a square. Then I'm going to fill in the back of that square with four of these giant craft sticks. Uh, it's gonna take almost exactly four and I'm gonna draw a line here of where I need to trim those so that there won't have the excess hanging over. So then I'm just going to trim those with my heavy duty scissors until I have all four of them cut the right size. I am not going to paint these. I'm going to keep them the natural wood color. It looks like I did need to make one a little bit skinnier just by cutting up the length of the stick. 
and then we're going to get all of those glued down so we have a nice background on our square sign for our little nativity. Next, we'll take our last two paint stick pieces. We're gonna glue those together at a right angle, and then we're gonna glue that roof to the top of our square, just putting a little bit of hot glue on each of the corners there and lining it up. Coming back to our little white square, I'm just taking some truffle and I'm just dry brushing around the edges to give it a little bit more interest. Then taking one of these mini grapevine wreaths, I'm cutting it in half, and I'm going to make the manger with these two pieces. Holding them together, putting a lot of hot glue on the back, we're gonna press these down for our little manger. Now here I'm using one of my Magnolia mini stencils that says, Oh Holy Night. I'm gonna press that down on that white square, and I'm going to use my glittering gold chalk paste so that we can have this gorgeous Oh Holy Night sign at the top of our nativity. Now to make our baby Jesus in the manger, I'm just taking a piece of felt and kind of rolling it up, gluing it on the end. That's going to be his body. We're going to glue that down into our grapevine manger. And then I'm just using one of these wood plugs to glue on top of that for his head. I had some of this corrugated metal left over from a Dollar Tree sign. I thought it'd be really nice to add these two pieces to the roof of our nativity. If you don't have this, don't worry about it. It was just something I had in my stash, so I decided to add it. We're also going to add a star right at the top of our nativity, and then lastly, we'll add our Oh Holy Night square sign above baby Jesus. DIY number six is super simple. We're gonna take three of these hanging wood star signs from Dollar Tree, as well as a five gallon paint stick. Now I'm just gonna remove the hangers from these, fill in the holes with a little bit of wood filler, and then we're going to make a tree by stacking these stars. So the first thing we're going to do is paint them our three green colors from Waverly. So the first one I'm going to paint with celery, it is our lightest. I'm gonna do just the front and the side edges as well. Our second star, I'm going to use the color moss, which is a little bit darker. And then our third star, we're going to paint fern. Next, I'm gonna take a five gallon paint stick and I'm just gonna give it a coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle. This is going to end up being our trunk for our star Christmas tree. And I did also use that same color to dry brush a little bit of truffle brown around each of our three stars, just to give a little bit more distressing and farmhouse look. If you end up having too much, you can just take your sander and kind of blend out that brown paint a little bit, give it a nice sanded edge, and again, that distressed look. Once those are all dry, we're going to glue them together, the, the uh, celery on top of the fern, and then the fern on top of the moss. So we're just gonna glue them together in a Christmas tree shape. Use your imagination. This was fun to put together. I'm going to put the paint stick on the back to be our trunk. And then the star that'll be at the top of our star tree is one of the chunky wood stars from Dollar Tree. I painted it white.
DIY number seven is an oval hanging Christmas tree sign using one of these wood ovals from Dollar Tree, some Scrabble letters, jute twine, scrapbook paper, and this metal cookie sheet from Dollar Tree as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my antique wax. I'm going to apply it to both sides of my oval, wiping away the excess just to get that nice dark stained look on the front, the back, and the edges. We want this to look a little bit more old and worn. Now using my ruler on this metal um, cookie sheet, I am going to measure out a triangle. I'm gonna draw the lines here with my scissors and then cut that out to be a Christmas tree on this sign. and that'll fit just perfect. We're going to carefully put some hot glue on the back and press that down onto our wood oval. If you don't wanna keep it the shiny metal, of course you can paint this whatever color you'd like. I'm trying to keep this pretty neutral. For the trunk, I'm gonna use two Scrabble tiles upside down so you don't see the letters. And then we're also going to glue a wood star to the top of our tree. I'm just gonna leave it the natural wood color. Now I am going to take a few more Scrabble tiles and spell the word peace right across the front of the tree. Of course, you could use whatever Christmas word you would choose. The last thing we're gonna do is make a beaded hanger for our uh, sign here. I did drill a small hole. If you don't have a drill, you could always use hot glue to get a hanger onto the back. I like to wrap the ends of my twine with tape. That just helps it go through the beads a little bit easier. And just put whatever beads you want, however many, make a little tying knot at the top so that you can hang your sign. For DIY number eight, I'm gonna show you another way to make a simple nativity sign using some tumbling tower blocks, some wood beads, and some other wood plank pieces. Now, again, this is a thrifted frame. I didn't have a back for it, so what I like to do is take the one gallon paint sticks, trim them down a little bit, and then once we have them painted the color we want, we're going to glue these into the back of our frame. I am going to use ink again, and I'm going to water it down with some of my water there from my Mr. Bottle. And so we're gonna do kind of a black wash on these paint sticks for our background. I love how this looks. I did spray a little bit more water on them and then wipe off the excess. And I think this is gonna look really, really cool for this sign. Then once those are all dry, we'll take our hot glue gun and we will glue those in one at a time. You can see I'm going every other where I have the notches facing up and then we'll turn the other one around so the notches are facing down. And we'll just keep going back and forth until we fill in the entirety of the frame. Next, I'm gonna take 12 tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to glue those together with wood glue to make four sticks that are three blocks long. We're gonna use these to build our stable. I am taking another piece of one of these rectangular wood planks. You can get these at Dollar Tree or you can find them at Walmart as well. I decided to do antique wax this time with this and I love how you can see the wood grain through the stain. Once my sticks of blocks are dry, I'm gonna paint all of those with my truffle, my brown Waverly chalk paint. Thank you. 
For my star this time, I decided to use one of these glittery stars that were left over from my 4th of July crafts and we painted it white. Now I'm going to use this stencil that unfortunately is not available right now. I'm hoping it will be in the future, but we have other stencils that say similar things. Um, oh Holy Night, things like that. But I chose to use my A Child Is Born and I'm just going to do that in white chalk paste on that antique wax wood square. Next, I'm gonna take more of the white chalk paste on a little palette knife and frame out the sign here. I love doing this, it just adds some more texture and interest. Coming back to my sticks of blocks, I'm just gonna dry brush some white on them to make them look a little more old and worn and then we're gonna let those dry. Now you can see, we're gonna just put everything together on our sign here. A child is born at the top. You can see I've used my four sticks of blocks to frame out the stable. So we're just gluing everything to the back of our sign. And then after we get the stable made, you'll be able to see I'm just using plain unpainted tumbling tower blocks to make Joseph there over on the right and Mary is kneeling on the left. I'm using wood beads for their heads. Um, I think I'm using, let's see, a wood plug for baby Jesus and beads for Joseph and Mary, and then we're gluing that white star up to the top. I also wanna say I did use two halves of a clothespin for the manger. For DIY number nine, we're gonna take an embroidery hoop and make a piece of art out of it using also some scrapbook paper, some Scrabble tiles, some chipboard, and some jute twine or baker's twine. So I am making a background by using a thick piece of chipboard, letting that Mod Podge dry, and then I'm going to iron this piece of music, scrapbook paper, I believe this is from Hobby Lobby, onto the chipboard. Now here's where I would do this different. Before I glue the embroidery hoop on, I would have traced it and cut out the circle from the chipboard and scrapbook paper, but I didn't do that. I first glued down the embroidery hoop and then I had to try to cut everything else away while it was glued on. So the easier method would have been to cut the circle first. Now I'm gonna cut three different triangle trees out of some scrapbook paper. And then we're gonna mount those onto some chipboard as well because this is very thin scrapbook paper. Once our triangle trees are dry, we're just going to cut those out with our heavy duty scissors. Then I am going to start gluing them onto the back of my project. I'm putting my larger tree actually on the background and then these other two are going to be elevated using a tumbling tower block sideways to raise them up from the back of the sign to give a little bit of dimension to our project. I'm going to add this Woodward Joy from Hobby Lobby. I'm first going to paint it with my fern green color and then we're just gonna glue this up to the top. There's lots of other options at Hobby Lobby though if you can't find these larger words or you could use the metal words from Dollar Tree as well.
The last thing I'm gonna do is wrap some red and white baker's twine around the base of our project. You will have to tack it down on the sides with glue so that it doesn't slide off. For DIY number 10, I'm gonna show you another way to decorate up some Dollar Tree candles for Christmas using some ribbon and some greenery. I have this burlap ribbon that's the tan and black check. I'm going to cut two lengths of this that will go all the way around our white candle and we're just going to glue those down right on top of each other so it looks like one large piece. Then we're gonna tie some red baker's twine across the middle and we're gonna wrap it a few times to try to cover up where the two pieces are meeting. So again, it looks like one big piece of burlap ribbon. Then I'm just gonna tuck in a couple pieces of boxwood greenery from Walmart. I did decide to wrap a little bit more of that red baker's twine around the center and tie a bow to finish it off. For our second candle, I'm taking a piece of sheet music from a really old thrifted songbook. I'm gonna cut it pretty skinny. I'm gonna cut two of these. I don't even think they ended up being Chris, oh, maybe they are Christmas songs, but I'm just gonna glue those down so that they go all the way around our red candle. For this one, I'm, I'm tying regular jute twine and wrapping that around the center. We're also going to add some red and black beads hanging down and then just a little bit of greenery. And I will also add a little jute twine bow. DIY 11 is going to be a Christmas countdown. I'm using a thrifted cutting board, but you can use any wood sign, a chalkboard from Dollar Tree, and some paint, and this Magnolia stencil. So I'm painting this cutting board. I wanted the base of my project to be Waverly's Fern, and then taping off the chalkboard of this little framed chalkboard, I'm painting the frame with crimson. Next, I'm gonna use just the three words on this stencil, and we're going to do days until Christmas with our red chalk paste. Then like I did in an earlier project, I'm gonna take that palette knife and some white chalk paste and just give an edge and frame to our sign. 
I am going to seal in the red chalk paint with Mod Podge just to make sure our chalk doesn't mess up our paint. And then I'm going to glue that chalkboard to the front of our sign. This will be a fun little way with a chalk marker or crayon to write the days until Christmas. DIY 12 is another Christmas tree wall hanging. We're gonna use this rectangular wood frame from Dollar Tree Plus, that same sheet music scrapbook paper, and the metal cookie sheet from Dollar Tree. So I'm measuring the inside of my frame. I'm going to trim down my scrapbook paper. It wasn't quite tall enough, so I did have to take a second piece and cut about an inch to fill in at the bottom. I'm not painting my frame. I'm gonna keep it natural for this project. So putting a little bit of Mod Podge at the bottom there, I'm laying down that one extra little piece I needed then applying Mod Podge to the rest of the frame and spritzing water on my paper. I'm going to lay that down in the back of our frame and we're going to let that dry completely. Now I did make myself a little triangle tree template this time with some scrapbook paper or copy paper and I'm just going to try to trace three of these on the metal cooking sheet. And we're gonna cut those out, be very careful not to cut yourself. I did make two of them smaller than the tall one in the middle. I'm going to give these a coat of my, I think this is Fern Waverly chalk paint. Next, I'm gonna use this lighter deco art wax. I'm going to do four tumbling tower blocks, but I actually only need three of them. We're just going to paint this on to darken up the wood a little bit. Then on my three wood stars, I'm going to use antique wax. Once the fern green was dry, I decided to add some moss. We're going to just use the chippy brush and dry brush that over to give some dimension and added color and texture to our three trees. Once those are dry, I took a black paint marker and also went around the edges just to kind of frame out the trees a little bit. Next, I'm gonna glue my three trunks three of the tumbling tower blocks to the base of our sign. And then we're going to glue down carefully the two smaller triangle trees on the right and the left, and then we'll do the larger one in the center. And then we'll glue our little wood stars to the tops of our trees. Now you could definitely stop here, but I decided to make a little beaded hanger for my sign. I'm just putting knots on either end and you can either drill holes through your sign or just glue it to the back. DIY 13 is a pair of simple Christmas table risers using two of these scrolly rectangles from Hobby Lobby and some of these wood cubes from Dollar Tree. Now I'm gonna paint one of these with crimson red and the other one with fern. These, like I said, came in a two pack from Hobby Lobby. I'm also going to paint four of the wood cubes from Dollar Tree with crimson and four with fern. These will be the feet for our table risers. Now I decided to use, this is one stencil that comes with two patterns from my Magnolia website. It's called Mini Dots and Plaid, and I love these patterns. They're super fun to use. So we're gonna use the dots on the green and the plaid on the red, and we're just gonna use white chalk paste for both of them.
Now, once my patterns are dry and I have sprayed them so that they don't come off, I'm gonna turn my risers over and now I'm gonna use the super glue gel from Dollar Tree to glue the four feet to each of my risers. For DIY 14, we're gonna make some super cute farmhouse wood palette ornaments using these wood mini palettes from Dollar Tree and some other supplies. Now I'm gonna make five of these. Of course, you can make more, you can make less, but the first step I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a base color of black. Again, you could modify this, you could do antique wax, you could do white. I wanted to use black. Now I'm gonna cut these rectangular planks into two inch sections and I'm just going to use my little miter box and my handsaw to do this. And each of my ornaments needs a two inch piece. We're gonna paint all of these with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. Once those are dry, I'm gonna use these five words from our Winter Words stencil. And I love this skinny font. We're going to get these stencils lined up on our rectangles, and then we're going to transfer these words from our stencil onto our wood with black chalk paste. Now these skinny sticks are from Walmart. They're kind of like paint stirs, but a little thicker. So what I did is I measured three and a half inch pieces to go on the top and the bottom and two inch pieces to go on the side. What I wanna do is kind of frame out our white pieces. So all those pieces are cut. I'm just going to darken them up now with my antique wax. And then once those are dry, we will start gluing them onto our palette. You can see I'm gonna do a three and a half inch piece all the way at the bottom there. Then I'm going to center one of my white rectangles with the words and then frame it out with the two smaller pieces of stir stick and another big one at the top. I love this, it just gives it a cute little wood frame going around the rectangular word. Once I have those all glued down, I'm gonna take this Pitberry garland from Dollar Tree and make a small wreath, probably about three circles worth, and that will be one for each of the ornaments. Then taking the black and white gingham ribbon from Dollar Tree, I'm gonna make a small bow for each of my ornaments as well. Then gluing down my Pitberry wreath, we're going to glue all those down and then glue the little bow to the top. These are super cute. I can't wait to make more of these this year because I'm pretty sure I sold all of them at my craft show last year. Then I'm just gonna make a really simple jute hanger. I'm not adding any beads. I'm just going to tie it around the little cross piece there on the back of the ornament, tie a knot, make a loop, and tie around the other end. DIY 15 is a racetrack nativity. This was, I only made one of these last year for my craft show and it sold right away. I'm using this nativity set from Dollar General. It comes with all these different pieces. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to stain the fronts 
with my antique wax just to make it a nice darker look. I'm only doing the fronts. I'm not gonna worry about doing the back or the side edges or anything like that. Next, I'm taking four of these little candle cups. I'm gonna paint them white. These are gonna be the feet for my nativity. This is just a box frame that I had. So now I'm just gluing these four feet to the bottom. I used one pack or two pieces of the racetrack from Dollar Tree in the toy section. It is orange, so I did spray paint it white. And now I'm adding a little more farmhouse by taking two lengths of nautical rope and gluing that down the center of each piece. Once I get it all the way down, I can go ahead and trim it up so it's the same length as the track. Now for my second piece of track, I'm gonna take like maybe an inch off do the same thing with the rope. This will be our lower or our inside arch here. So this is the smaller piece. It's a little bit shorter because it'll be underneath and the other piece will go up over this piece from the other two corners. You can see I'm gluing it with super glue and hot glue. And then by the time I let this sit and really cure, it was very, very sturdy. So there's our second piece going up over the top. And then I just started arranging the nativity pieces, a few um, Christmas trees that I had from Dollar Tree until I had everything where I wanted it. And then I just started hot gluing pieces in. Once I had all the pieces glued down, I decided to cover up the rest of the bottom with the moss, the reindeer moss, the darker green color, and I just love how this turned out. You'll also see that I did glue a Christmas ornament from Dollar Tree, a plastic star, to the top of the nativity. For DIY 16, we're gonna make some chunky snow people using some pieces of two by four and these snowman hat ornaments from Dollar Tree as well as a stencil from Magnolia. So I'm not sure why I decided to paint these black first, but you could definitely just paint them white if you wanted. I think I was thinking that if I sanded it, a little bit of the black would show through, but I don't think it really did. Maybe, maybe a little bit. So I'm gonna use the male and female snow people faces stencil. I'm gonna do two males and one female. I'm just gonna apply those to my square blocks and use black for the eyes and the mouth and then orange for the nose. These are gonna be super cute. The girl is just a little bit different. She has some eyelashes as well as her eyebrows. This is a super cute stencil for making all sorts of little snow people. Then when we get to the longer two by four pieces, we're just gonna use the stencil that has the three buttons and do that on all three. Next, taking some little pieces of fleece scarf from Dollar Tree, I'm gonna first do our little female. I'm gonna hot glue the head onto the body a little bit off center, and then we're gonna use the white hat ornament for her. We're gonna tie a piece of red fleece scarf around to be a little tiny scarf, and then glue the white hat ornament on her head. We're gonna do the same for the boys, except white scarves with red hats. And these are so cute. Definitely making more of these this year. DIY 17 are some Dollar Tree Christmas trees using these wood Christmas tree signs, some tumbling tower blocks, some scrapbook paper, and some other little Christmas decor from Dollar Tree. Now, 
I'm gonna make one taller tree by taking two trees. I'm cutting the stump off one and I'm gluing it onto the other one. You're gonna see here better in a minute how I'm overlapping them using wood glue and um, some clamps. I'm gonna glue this tree one section up on the lower tree, if that makes sense. I think you can see it there on the back and then clamp it until it is completely dry. Now coming to our single tree, I'm just gonna apply some Mod Podge to this and we're going to spritz some water on the back of our paper and Mod Podge this onto the front of this Christmas tree. And I am gonna sell these in my craft show, so I want the back to be finished. I'm gonna paint the back of the single tree and of this stacked tree as well with Fern Green Waverly chalk paint. Next, I have this little wood truck from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna paint this as well with my crimson and my truffle and possibly, I believe, black for the wheels. Then once my paint is dry, I'm gonna use my little fingertip knife and we're gonna trim away the excess of the scrapbook paper from the Christmas trees and I will sand those edges as well just to make sure they're nice and clean. Now that the back of this stacked tree is green, I'm going to apply the scrap of paper. You can see that I'm starting just with that bottom section and then I'm going to put scrap of paper on the rest. We're gonna go up, it's gonna leave a tiny little bit at the top, but one of our scraps is going to be able to line up perfectly. So we will Mod Podge this tree with three different pieces of paper. And I will be putting Mod Podge over the front of my scrap of papers as well. Like I said, I want these to be nice and finished. I'm gonna make a little platform for my trees using black, uh, or using Jenga blocks. I am going to paint them black. I'm going to glue these together in pairs, kind of like a sandwich cookie. And we're going to mount these on a couple pieces of two by four that I've painted black. So there's my tree. I'm gluing it down to the center of my two by four piece. And then I'm going to sandwich it between pairs of Jenga blocks that I've painted black. There you can see what I'm doing. And this is gonna make our tree nice and sturdy and able to stand. I am going to take two of these wood stars from Walmart, paint one with crimson, one with fern, and we're gonna make these just really fun, colorful uh, Christmas trees. I'm also taking some of the pit berries and I'm going to wrap it around each section of our tree. This is also going to help camouflage the fact that this is two trees glued together. So I'm using the red pit berries on the house tree and then I think I'm gonna use white uh, on the other tree. I can't, yep, white ones to go on this plaid tree. Taking some pieces of raffia, I'm gonna make two raffia bows, one for each of my trees. I just love mixing different textures and colors, and I'm going to glue the red star on top of the house tree, and then a raffia bow, and then we're gonna glue the green star on top of the plaid tree, and a raffia bow. Now you could definitely stop here, but I'm gonna show you how you can also add some fun items to the base of your tree. Things from Dollar Tree like ornaments, um, these little Christmas village pieces. I'm going to take one of these trees from Dollar Tree. I'm bending the uh, base of it and gluing it to the back of our truck so it looks like our truck is carrying a Christmas tree. And we're gonna glue that there to the front of the tumbling tower blocks. The other tree, we're gonna put some fencing and some trees. These are really fun. These would be a fun project to do with some friends or some kids or grandkids and just see how everybody's turn out so different.
DIY 18 are these wood sled ornaments from Dollar Tree. They've got the flat side and the one that has the little sections. I'm also going to use a couple items from Hobby Lobby. First thing I'm doing with my sleds after I remove the hanger is painting the runners with crimson red and then the tops of my sled with black. I like giving it this nice classic color scheme. Then I'm going to take my little sander and just distress the edges up just a little bit for that farmhouse look. Now I have this wood joy word again from Hobby Lobby and also one of these mini snowflakes from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to paint those white. On my flat, no, this isn't the flat sled. This one also has sections. I'm going to use one of my mini stencils, let it snow, and apply this with white chalk paste onto my sled. The other sled, we're just going to glue the joy word that we painted white. And for the Let It Snow sled, I'm gonna add a little bit of snow to my sled using white chalk paste going around with my squeegee. Then like I said, we're gonna glue this Joy Word to the front of the other sled and one of these small, tiny Christmas wreaths from Hobby Lobby in the craft section and then the white snowflake to the top of the other sled. Before we put the hangers back on our sleds, we're gonna add some beads and then these will be finished. DIY 19 is this joy to the world sign. I'm going to use this wood frame sign from Hobby Lobby as well as the wood joy to the world and a piece of shiplap scrapbook paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint the frame of my sign and a little bit onto the inside with my black Waverly chalk paint. Next, taking the joy to the world wreath sign also from Hobby Lobby. I am going to fill in the hole where the hanger was with some wood filler, and then I'm just going to paint this with crimson and fern. While our paint is drying, I'm gonna cut the scrapbook paper so that it fits perfectly inside our box frame. I believe the inside is 11 by 11, so I'm just taking an inch off each side of our paper. Then we're going to put some Mod Podge down, spritz some water on the back of our scrapbook paper, and attach that to the inside of our frame. And I am going to go ahead and apply more Mod Podge to the top of that scrap of paper just to make sure it's nice and sealed. Then once our wreath is dry, I'm taking some E6000 and you can see it's not going to fit inside the frame. It just rests gently on the outside of the frame. So we're going to glue that down. Then taking this Hobby Lobby ribbon, it's like my favorite Christmas ribbon. I think it's so cute with the red and green. Matches perfectly with the crimson and fern. Just put a little bow to again cover up that hole where the hanger was. DIY 20 are these beaded wreath ornaments. I got these beaded wreath ornaments from Hobby Lobby, some black chalk circles, but you could definitely just use wood circles from Walmart. And we're gonna use some mini Magnolia stencils. So I'm just simply going to paint one of my beaded wreaths with crimson, one with fern, and the other one with white.
Then taking my black chalkboard circles or just circles that you painted black, I'm choosing which of my mini stencils I'm gonna put with each beaded wreath. And we're gonna stick these down and apply these with our chalk paste. Next, taking my Crocodile Big Bite, I'm gonna punch a hole in each of my circles so that I can hang it in the center of my beaded wreath. DIY 21 is another easy DIY ornament using these round ornaments from Hobby Lobby, some ribbon, and those winter words again. I'm gonna paint the base of these with white, just keeping it a real simple white, red, and black theme. I love that these come with the red ribbon hangers already on them. And I'm just gonna choose, again, some of my winter words to apply to the fronts of my ornaments with black chalk paste. Next, I'm gonna add some little pieces of this Dollar Tree Pine Pick from uh, the Christmas Crafts and just gluing down individual little pieces. And then we are going to glue a little bow on top of those. For DIY 22, I'm gonna make a yarn and twine Christmas trees using these styrofoam cones, some pit berries, some jute twine, some chunky yarn, and I'm gonna use two of these chunky wood circles. You can use the ones from Dollar Tree. These are from Michaels. They do not have a hole in them, and I'm just going to use these as stands for our trees, so I'm gonna just stain those with antique wax. Now, this chunky white yarn was pretty easy. Once you get it attached to the top and going around the styrofoam cone, you're pretty much just gonna wrap it until you get to the end. Then you'll need to put a little bit more of the hot glue so that it doesn't slip down off the edge. Once you get all the way to the end, you can just snip the rest of your yarn off. Then we'll do the same thing for the twine. I'm going to cover the top of our cone with hot glue. And once it's secure, I'm gonna kind of go in a spiral motion to cover the entire top. And then we'll start wrapping it down the sides of the cone as well. Now,
Taking two more of these wood cubes from Dollar Tree, I'm going to paint them with truffle brown. These are going to be the little trunks for our trees. So now we're gonna glue on our little trunks and then we're gonna glue those to our circle bases. Taking two more of the wood stars from Walmart, I'm gonna paint one of them with gold. I did need to do a couple coats so it'd be dark enough. And the other one I'm going to paint white. So on my white yarn tree, I'm going to wrap with the gold pit berries. And for my twine tree, I'm gonna wrap with the red and green bells. Then my gold painted star is gonna go on top of my white yarn tree. And once we've wrapped these bells around the twine tree, we're going to glue the white star on top. For DIY 23, we're gonna make this nativity round using a white painted round from Magnolia, a couple stencils and some ribbon. So I'm just measuring how far down I should paint my round and I'm gonna use crimson on the top portion of my round. So I'm just gonna give that a coat and then I am going to spray that before I stencil on it. I love this project, the red and white. I'm just going to use the little nativity scene from the Jesus is the Reason stencil. So you can see I'm gonna line up the bottom of the stenciled image right where the red and white paint meet each other because I'm going to do the stencil with white chalk paste. Now the other stencil that I'm gonna use that says Silent Night is not available, but I would use the top of this stencil, Jesus is the Reason, and put those words on the white section if I was gonna be doing this again because the stencil is available. So whichever words you use, just apply that stencil down. And for this one, I'm using Old Glory Red for the words to match the red that we painted the top of our round. Next, I'm gonna add a jute twine hanger to the top of our round, and I am going to add some white and natural colored beads to that before I tie the knot. Then taking a couple different ribbons, I'm gonna do a messy bow with the white with red stripes and the plain burlap. We're gonna tie that in the center with some jute twine and glue that to the top of our project. For DIY 24, we're gonna make these snowy tree ornaments super easy using this little ornament, uh, empty ornament from Dollar Tree, as well as some little trees and the snow. So just gluing your tree or a couple of smaller trees to the gray base of this ornament, you're gonna put on there whatever you'd like, then go ahead and add some of the glittery snow to the top portion of your ornament. I'm using this faux snow from Dollar Tree. Just putting a little bit in, and then we're going to put the trees down inside and screw on the base. That's really how simple it is to make these. I am going to add a little bit of greenery and ribbon or berries to the top.
And for our last DIY for this video, we're gonna make these metal star chicken wire looking signs. I'm using two of these square wrapped canvases that were gifted to me. I'm actually just going to remove the canvas and save them for another time. I just want the wood frames and I'm going to stain those up with antique wax using the baby wipe method. So we're gonna get those all stained. And then I'm gonna cut a couple pieces of gutter guard, which actually is plastic, but looks a lot like chicken wire. It's just a lot easier to work with. And I'm going to pretty much kind of dry brush, leave some of the black showing through with my white chalk paint. Then I'm going to turn this over to the back and I'm going to staple it to the back of my wood frames. We're gonna do this for both of the frames. And then I'm gonna take these metal star ornaments. These are from Dollar General. They were a dollar and I'm gonna remove the hanger and then we're just going to glue these to the center of the frames. The ornaments did have a little bit of greenery and a jute twine bow, but I'm gonna add a little tiny black and white checked gingham bow on top of the jute twine just to add a little bit more farmhouse to this project. Well, thanks so much for joining me tonight for this compilation video. I love all of these projects and was so glad to revisit them. Please let me know in the comments which project was your favorite, and we'll see you next time. Take care.